Hello, dear colleagues and participants of SIL conference. My name is Svetoslav and I represent at my university. I'm very happy to present you our project called The Use of Students' Digital Portraits in Creating Smart Higher Education, a case study of the AI benefits in analyzing educational and social media data. First of all, let's take a look on digital transformation of higher education. So we have such entities as students, labor, market and some educational activities like courses, workshops, conferences and other activities. And we want to connect all these entities using its data and uh, applying some artificial intelligence technology to make this process uh, kind of smart, uh, automatic and efficient. Let's take a look on the timeline of a student. At each point of time, each student uh, has uh, own views on his or her future career, properties, abilities, learning outcomes, and our goal is to make each student as much satisfied as possible at the aggregation point. So we can formalize this problem as that we need to describe each student's learning outcomes, psychometric activities or properties and scientific interests at each point of time. And if we can do this, we can make uh, the studying process more personalized, paying attention on each student's properties, for example, learning outcomes, abilities and other properties. And we can make personalized recommender systems, for example, recommendation of additional online courses for each student. And uh, we can uh, get a more detailed description of each student for labor market, so it's something more than just a diploma. Uh, we created such a digital portrait in my university. We had a huge, a huge amount of data starting from 2014. Uh, there were more than 13,000 of unique baccalaureate students and uh, we had 47 unique semesters. Let's talk a bit more about uh, a digital portrait itself. It is a unified representation of a student using different uh, sources of data. For example, internal university data, social demographic data, data from students' learning outcomes, uh, from admissions office, social networks, attendance and other sources. Uh, so let's talk about data from social networks. Uh, we chose Kontakte as the most popular social network in Russia and I should say that all the data that we used from social networks was used only in educational and research purposes and all this data was open source. <clears throat> uh, so we matched about 40% of our students uh, using the first, uh, the first name of student, the second name of the student and his or her birth date. Then we generated some dynamic statistics from the page, for example, mean amount of likes per post, mean amount of comments per post and other statistics. And we applied topic modeling algorithm called uh, latent replay allocation. So topic modeling allows us to get students interest from his or her page. Uh, also, we used sentiment analysis, which is a good representation of a psychometric site of a student for digital portrait. And as a result, uh, we get uh, the representation of a student from social networks. Then we added uh, representation from his or her learning outcomes. So by this, I mean uh, this case. Just imagine we have a student on the first semester and uh, we have a data represented by time series of, for, for example, GPA or number of academic failures. And we want to get a unified representation at each point of time. So uh, we just take this time series and we generate uh, statistics from that. For example, mean, standard deviation, minimum value, maximum value, last value, first value, etc. Uh, and by doing this, we get a unified representation at each semester of a student. So we can uh, consider that we edit learning outcomes in our digital portrait. And as a result, we get a digital portrait of a student in Itmo University represented by 244 features. Uh, so these features are from uh, additional kind of sources like social networks, from uh, sources uh, like uh, learning outcomes data, internal university data, and it is a good uh, and it is a good representation with different angles for each student. So 
After that, we applied artificial intelligence algorithms to predict some targets using this digital portrait. Uh, let's take a look on the pipeline. So first of all, we built a digital portrait of each student. Then we chose a set of machine learning algorithms and we did a data preprocessing depending on the chosen algorithm. For example, uh, you have a different pipelines of preprocessing of categorical features for tree-based algorithms and for linear algorithms. So after that, we applied nested cross-validation uh, this time component. So uh, not to overfit on the data from the future, we use uh, this type of cross-validation. And then we calculate the best threshold to separate classes and we choose the best algorithm. Uh, okay, we can split our targets uh, into two parts. The first part is integral uh, predictions. Uh, just imagine the process when you have a a uh, new student, uh, you don't know about him, and you want to uh, see how he or she will perform uh, at the graduation point. So you don't have any data from uh, learning outcomes of the student, you have only a kind of social demographic data, maybe social networks and some other data. And you want to make predictions on the last point of uh, student's timeline. Uh, so we chose three targets. The first one is the probability of students drop out from the university. The second one is scientific activity of uh, student. And uh, the last one is uh, the, probability, the probability of getting a first honors degree. So in this table you can see the results of models conversion uh, for dropout target with the confidence interval. And uh, as you can see, we took four machine learning models, logistic regression, random forest, and two models of uh, grading boosting on tree implementations by uh, XJBoost and by CatBoost. And as you can see, uh, CatBoost implementation uh, has almost uh, uh, the highest score almost at each metric. So we will use this uh, model as the final model in our tables. Uh, this happens uh, because of uh, the implemented uh, target encodings for categorical data and we had a lot of categorical data in our digital portrait. So let's take a look on the uh, metrics in our portrait. So I hope you see this. Uh, so, we have uh, pretty high metrics uh, on receiver operator curve around the curve uh, because uh, we choose this metric because we have um, some class disbalance and this metric uh, can handle it. And also, by analyzing some business metrics as accuracy, recall and precision, we see that we get pretty astonishing and good results in predicting integral targets. Okay, the second type of uh, predictions, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, also, we analyzed the feature importance of our models in uh, integral targets. Uh, so the most important feature almost for every target is type of, of certification of secondary education. This is uh, a target uh, that represents um, what education a certain student had before applying into the university, for example, college or high school. And after that, we have targets like hometown. Uh, we have a hypothesis if uh, a hometown of university and hometown of a student is the same, uh, the same city or a town, uh, then the student um, has lower uh, motivation to study and if a student uh, came from some other town to study uh, in this university in this city, uh, the student has more motivation to study. So it is just a hypothesis. Okay, the second type of uh, predictions is dynamic predictions. Uh, this is uh, the prediction uh, inside the students, uh, the students' timeline in the university. Just imagine the situation when you have this current semester of a student and you add the data from the previous semesters into your digital portrait. And then you make prediction on the next semester or at any time in the future after this. Uh, and if uh, the student comes to the next semester, we get this situation. 
So these uh, we accumulate more and more data and uh, we make predictions on next semester. And uh, by accumulating more data, we get uh, the best quality of our models. Okay, we had targets as GPA, number of academic failures, academic failure probability, dropout probability, scientific activity uh, probability. And uh, we had a different model at each semester. So uh, the first three targets uh, were predicted in the next semester and uh, the last two at the any time in the future. Okay. And uh, it is a very important moment here that we get uh, a lot of uh, disbalanced classes. Uh, for example, uh, dropout uh, probability, um, sorry, dropout target uh, at any time in the future at semester four uh, has the distribution uh, with only 17% of students dropped. And if you're familiar with the concept of getting the probabilities from machine learning models, uh, so you just uh, see the normalized distance from the separating hyperplane between a negative and positive class, and you just normalize and uh, treat it as a probability, as a model's confidence. Or ju you just uh, kind of uh, calculate uh, the heights of the trees in grading boosting model, and you just kind of uh, see the mean number of it. Uh, so uh, you don't get a uniform distribution and uh, sometimes uh, when you have a very big uh, kind of uh, disbalance in your classes uh, you want to change your probability from uh, 0.5 to some other level to split the classes so we used f-score as the optimal metric to get the optimal threshold uh, for each model for each semester and uh, it got the better results than if we just used 0 0.5. Okay. So as you can see, we get two uh, regressive targets. Uh, this is uh, the GPA in the next semester and uh, mean number of academic failures also in the next semester. We used metric uh, NRMSE, so it is just normalized root mean square error, uh, normalized by the mean uh, now by the mean value of target and uh, the results you can see in this slide uh, so we get uh, pretty good results I think and uh, we see the trend that uh, the more we accumulate data the best uh, models predictions we have and uh, uh, in the slide you can see uh, our results for each semester for predicting dropout target uh, it's also I think very good metrics here you can see the results of predicting publications uh, because of the reason that uh, publication can uh, take more time we split not on semesters we split on separate years to make a target and also you can see that the more data we have the better predictions we get and finally we can see academic failures target uh, so uh, it has also pretty good metrics for this target I think and uh, it shows that uh, we got a good uh, portrait of a student okay uh, also uh, we analyzed uh, feature importance uh, if we take just random target and random model almost in every case you can see that the most important feature is identity of students group uh, this happens because we have different uh, kind of complication of studying in different groups uh, in most of the faculties in university and uh, this gives uh, uh, useful information for our models. Okay, as a future goals, uh, we can take master students into account, we can design a personalized learning track depending on a digital portrait of a student uh, and we can accumulate more and more data for digital portrait and it will uh, make the predictions better. And uh, we can make uh, recommendation systems both for students and for uh, university administration using these predictions. Okay, let's make conclusions. Uh, we built a digital portrait of a student and uh, we got pretty high scores using this digital portrait, both for integral and for dynamic targets. Uh, and we propose some future work using this uh, concept of uh, accumulating more and more data and we can say that we reached the first step of smart education paradigm. I hope it was interesting. Uh, I'm very glad that uh, you liked my presentation if you did. Thank you.